And now it's I mean, time to go. Actually, we see Matt there talking to, uh, to Fox News. Let's listen to what he had to say. I mean, the president uh, has uh, boldly said that he has a pen and a phone. He needs to pick up the gosh darn phone and do something positive with it to get this young man out. And again, the amazing thing, Matt telling us just moments ago here on America's Forum, when his legislative director called the White House yesterday about the Internet petition at WhiteHouse.gov, uh, getting more than 100,000 signatures, the White House hung up on the legislative director of Congressman Matt Sam. Now, let's go in depth. The top story this hour, the primary elections taking place in eight states today, including Alabama, California, Iowa, Mississippi, Montana, New Jersey, New Mexico, and South Dakota. Here to join us now, taking a closer look at a few of the high-profile races, Matt Towery from Insider Advantage. Matt, as always, we appreciate your time here on America's Forum. Oh, thanks so much. Hello, Matt. I'm sorry I'm having a little trouble. Uh, do we have Matt? Hi, Matt. Uh, hey, forgive me. Hi, can you hear me? I can hear you now, and I apologize to you Great. if I left your... Uh, your salutation not responded to. Let's talk about some of those hotly contested races in those eight states. The establishment candidates against the Tea Party, well, not exactly. Uh, in Iowa, it's kind of curious. When you take a look at Joni Ernst, hog wild, uh, Sarah Palin identifying with the Tea Party, Mitt Romney, Marco Rubio with the establishment, her TV ad about castrating hogs on a hog farm, cutting out pork, has gotten a lot of buzz. Let's again take a listen to that famous and or infamous ad. I'm Joni Ernst. I grew up castrating hogs on an Iowa farm. So when I get to Washington, I'll know how to cut pork. Joni Ernst, mother, soldier, conservative. My parents taught us to live within our means. It's time to force Washington to do the same to cut wasteful spending, repeal Obamacare, and balance the budget. I'm Joni Ernst, and I approve this message because Washington's full of big spenders. Let's make them squeal. Well, there it is. So, so the bottom line, Matt, you, you, the ad has created a splash. She's got support from Tea Party champions and the establishment. Can she pull off that primary? We saw briefly the field of candidates on the Republican ballot I believe she has to have, what, 35% margin to avoid a runoff? That's right. w will that happen for her tonight in the Hawkeye State? Well, we're going to be watching Iowa and Mississippi, which we'll talk about in a moment, I'm sure, uh, because in both cases, the candidates need to get the magic numbers. In her case, she has to get 35% plus one vote. And if she does so, then she becomes a nominee. If not, this defaults to a, a GOP state convention and uh, you and I have both been down that road before. We know what those things can be like. Anything could happen. So you do have a very unusual uh, mixture of the alleged establishment, alleged Tea Party, whatever they are, and, and they've morphed into today. They're pretty much of the same uh, mind and set, and that is they want to take the Senate. And so all of these groups from Mitt Romney, more establishment-like, Marco Rubio, more establishment-like, all the way to Sarah Palin, who's been backing primarily sort of Tea Party-esque candidates, they're all pushing one candidate, and that's the woman who says that she can castrate pigs and she can go up and take care of Washington, D.C. Well, <laughs> she seems to have, Matt, all the uh, qualities that unify or galvanize at least all wings of the GOP party here. Let's play some sound bites that we have prepared from some of the folks, including Romney and Palin and Rubio, who have been out there in Iowa campaigning on Joni Ernst's behalf. Let's play that clip. Oh, gosh, no. We're just, look, I just want to spend the next two years of my service in the Senate in a Republican majority with special candidates like, like Joni Ernst. I mean, all right, there's the clip from Rubio. And, you know, we saw Rubio there. We've seen Palin there as well. We've also seen uh, Mitt Romney there. But, Matt, are they really there campaigning on Joni Ernst's behalf? Or is this because we're talking about Iowa here, the side of the First and Nation caucus, and there could be potential political benefits for these candidates visiting the state of Iowa? Well, Certainly in the case of Rubio, I don't think there's any question there's political benefit. As far as Mitt Romney, heavens, I hope not, because that, uh, that, that vote would not, uh, would not sail. Uh, that having been said, I, I just think that the, the secondary uh, motive, which is probably really the overriding motive, is 
the Republicans see a few states being critical to them being able to take control of the Senate, Iowa being one of them. And, and this also gives them an opportunity to all combat this concept of the war against women, which allegedly the Republican Party has been engaged in for years. And admittedly, we saw in, in another round of primaries a few weeks ago, women did not fare particularly well in Republican primaries. So they need one that shows a powerful woman emerging as a nominee and winning a nomination. And so they're, they're putting all the power of every wing of the Republican Party behind her efforts. Matt, our viewers got a glimpse of what we want to talk about now. Let's move along to Mississippi. The headline at our parent website, uh, Newsmax.com, talks about this being the meanest primary. You've got longtime incumbent United States Senator Thad Cochran versus State Senator Chris McDaniel. The polls, as we understand it, basically have moved to a, to a dead heat. And you'll recall a couple of weeks ago, one of the reasons they're calling this the meanest primary a, a blogger, a self-identified McDaniel supporter, snuck into the assisted living facility where Thad Cochran's wife uh, is now a patient with advanced Alzheimer's. Uh, and we see the picture of the blogger being arraigned in a Mississippi courtroom here. These kind of outside distractions, and I don't know if the Cochran campaign has gone after McDaniel saying, you had to know this guy was for you. Has this become a sidelight that will help the incumbent, or does McDaniel have enough passion and energy on his side to, uh, to overcome the longtime incumbent Thad Cochran? Well, let's address a couple of things uh, in order. The first, the polls. The poll, unfortunately, Mississippi does not have a major media market. And as a result, unlike Florida or Georgia or California or New York or other places, you don't get a lot of independent polling. So what we're seeing here, when you look at the real clear politics average, which has it at 45, 45, and that's dead heat, it's a bunch of Democrat-leaning or Republican-leaning partisan pollsters. Now, I don't put a lot of faith in those guys because they generally tell people what they want to hear. The last poll that came out was a Democrat-leading poll, and it showed Cochran way behind. So now there's this story that's sort of taking shape within the media, both the national media, and they're trying to push it to Mississippi, although it's not working, that, that Cochran has he, he peaked too soon. Well, I don't know about that. I, I, I generally tend to, if there's a tie, I usually think the tie goes to the incumbent. We, we don't know. The next issue is this blogger. Yes, this has been the meanest, one of the meanest uh, races that I've seen in the sort of the modern southern uh, uh, years. You know, our, one of our sites we own is the Southern Political Report. We cover 11 states. And since we've owned it in 2000 or 2005, I think we bought it from Insider, for Insider Vantage, uh, Hastings Wyman, who's a national institution in D.C., covers Southern Political Report for us. I think Hastings would say, and I concur, this is probably the meanest, old-fashioned style race we've seen in, in decades of the South. And uh, this blogger issue did explode, and at one time it created a lot of momentum for Cochran. And now as it's begun, to, and by the way, it has all kinds of little rumors running from it. There are rumors that the, you know, the Cochran people uh, knew about it. There were rumors that uh, the uh, McDaniel campaign had direct links to it. There have been you know, ads were created around it. It, it has become a, a seminal moment in that campaign. But in the end, the issue is, again, being painted by the national media, most of them, as a Tea Party versus Republican establishment race. And I think it's become much more than that. The, the, these things are far more complicated in these states than they are often portrayed in some of these, these uh, national uh, sites that, that, we, that we look to every day. I think in this case, Thad Cochran, the real issue is, is Thad Cochran who has he been there so long that he's no longer in touch with Mississippi? I personally don't think so, but I think the Mississippi voters are going to decide that tonight. So you're telling us, Chris McDaniel, if you're going to look at the upset special tonight, it's the state senator McDaniel over Thad Cochran. Yeah, the, and here's the real problem for Cochran. Uh, Cochran has to get 50 percent of the vote, and there's a, there there's another. <laughs> Uh, there another name in this in this mess as well. So he could face a runoff, and if that were the case, it would be just a disaster. In fact, that's really what a lot of the national press is focusing on now. So well, you know, I, I, we'll keep that in mind in terms of the runoff. Uh, one other state yeah. we need to talk about, Matt, and that's way yes, out sir. west, California. A few years back, adopting the jungle primary. Now, 
obviously Jerry Brown uncontested uh, for the Democrat nomination. When we say jungle <laughs> primary, that means regardless of party, the top two candidates in the primary would move ahead. Uh, it's a moot point. The Republicans will have a nominee, but who is going to be that nominee out in California, Matt, for governor? Boy, that's that, that's a great question, and, and none of us know the answer to that right now. They are they are locked in. Uh, well, of course, I mean, we we all know that, that Jerry Brown is is probably and they certainly going to emerge as the as the winner of as governor for the for his fourth term. I mean, California has just become inextricably Democrat. So. In that sense, it, it really doesn't make a whole lot of difference. But we don't know who is uh, going to be in second place. That's been a the, the, the jungle primary. And by the way, the polling out there is very hard to do as well because, uh, much like Florida, uh, California is is, is a, a sort of incorporation of of nations. You have the nation of North Northern California very liberal. You have San Francisco very liberal. You get down to the south, close to San Diego, and some of those areas it gets more conservative. And obviously, Orange County was sort of the, the center point of all of that uh, in the past. But it's very hard to poll in California. When you're Fair enough. With I guess what we'll find and- out tonight, Matt Towery, is the votes will be counted for the honor of challenging entrenched incumbent Democrat Jerry Brown. We'll keep our eye on that. Matt Towery, as always, we appreciate your wisdom and experience. We'll see what happens in Mississippi and Iowa. Have you back real soon. Speaking of coming back, that's what we're going to do following this break here on America's Forum.